Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. Today, I'm going to run you through client onboarding workflows. So there's three workflows here. One which essentially looks for hot leads, so new, uh, new, new, new contacts coming into your CRM who are worth getting in contact with. Uh, we have the client onboarding where we send out a form for a quote, for example, where we can agree on the scope of the project and get them to sign off on it. And then another workflow that basically looks for these submissions and updates your CRM and sends a Slack message. Uh, now, I haven't included uh, invoices on this. I focus on quotes because I live in Portugal and sending invoices that are compliant with uh, government regulations is exceedingly difficult and onerous. It has to be a manual process. Um, I also use Airtable as my CRM. But when you watch this video, you'll see how you can apply these principles to any CRM like HubSpot or Pipedrive. And you can also integrate invoice information too. So invoice numbers, right, for example, it's all pretty much the same, the same wheelhouse. So we'll start off with a hypothetical scenario of a new lead coming in. Now we have our hot leads tab in Airtable here, and it's filtered by basically the interest of a person. So if someone sends in an inbound LinkedIn message to me, hey, can we talk? Instantly they're a hot lead. If they reply to an outbound campaign in email, hot lead if it's a positive reply. If they just send me an email uh, to say, hey, can we talk, a hot lead. And obviously meeting set, if someone books a calendar meeting directly, they're a hot lead. So if we set up an example here, we'll say that somebody, myself, has set up a meeting with me. All I know is that they are called George Woodworth and the company, their email address is george at upfish.co. And we'll also say that they are a meeting set, okay? This will happen automatically for me, but for the purpose of this example, I'll put it in manually. So as we see here, we have a new lead. I don't know anything about him. So what happens here, the hot leads, it uh, basically will run. It will search for new hot leads based on their created time. It notices basically their name and their email. So it tries to find information. It updates the CRM, it creates a Slack message for me to say, hey, you've got a great new lead and it creates an opportunity as well. So as we can see here, we now have a bit more information on this person. Uh, full name is Apollo ID, job title, headline, LinkedIn information, email address, the country they're based in, the company they work for, all of this stuff. And it also creates an opportunity here. So we have an opportunity for the name of the person, George Woodworth. We have the, the contact, we have the email, we have the company website and we have the company. So this is from old details from a company I used to work for a couple of months ago. Uh, now this information is a lookup. You'll see here it's replicated again here. We have a company name, we have a contact name, we have the email, we have the company website. The reason for this is because I found that when the meeting happens, you might actually have a different contact person within the company to the one that you are originally in contact with. So it might be the case that um, someone from marketing has been in contact with me, but my actual contact is the CMO or the CEO. So the next stage after this is once the call is done, I'm on the call, uh, hypothetically, with George Woodworth, and I'll put in the information just to confirm, yes, you actually, uh, the company name is Upfish, for example, and the contact name is going to be some person called David, uh, let's say David Pike, and the email is, uh, uh, I'll keep this as my email so that you can see the emails as they come in, but we'll say it's George at upfish.co. And uh, what else might we have here? We might also have the company website is being different. We'll, we'll keep it the same, upfish.co. Okay, and then you have the description of the project. So I'll just copy an example one here. Basically, this will come up in your invoice as the scope of the project. So working to help them convert more warm leads by increasing the website, the traffic, social media pages. Um, and then also I can say it will be responsible for managing all marketing tools. I have a very small keyboard, so apologies about the uh, spelling mistakes here. And I'll also add here a payment to be on last working day of each month, okay? So this would be the description, basically the work that you'll be doing for them. So on the call, you'll go over this to confirm. Okay, once you've added in that, we have some extra details here, the price, let's just say the price is going to be 2000 euros and it is going to be on a monthly basis. Okay, so this will get entered in. So they'll see in the quote, every month you need to pay 2000 euros. The hours in the billing cycle, and this is private information. This lets me know how much work I need to do each month for the person. So let's just say I wanna do five hours work and on this client each month okay this comes in later i'll explain how services this is optional if you have um, itemized services and you just want to keep track of it it's not so important okay so you put in all of the information i'll add a sales account here as well again this is entirely optional if you have lots of sales people for you you can add them in here to make sure 
So once you have all of this information, okay, the next step is to check, yes, is it good? If it is good, then we change the status from to do to send to client, okay? And this comes into the next workflow. So we look at these new opportunities and we check to see when the status is updated to send to client. Once it's found those people, it sends an email with the quote. So as an example here, I'm sending it to myself because I don't want to, you would change this to the email address of the, the Airtable, but I'm sending it to myself because it's just a test email. And then you see here, I have a jot form with lots of expanded URLs. So what is this? As an example here, here is a very, very simple jot form marketing quote. I asked for the client's name, the company's, uh, the company name, the email address, the project name, which will be taken from the Airtable. This is the name of the project. So I'll update that during the call. The project outline, the pricing, the billing cycle, somewhere, something for someone to sign and a submit button. Now, this is just something I made for the purpose of this example, because I wanted to keep the fields as short as possible. Once you have this particular form, then you come to prepopulate.jotform.io. This is a great JotForm add-on. Essentially, when you add in your forms, it shows it here. And let's just put in tester, test, 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 test. And these are all of the forms that can be populated and it generates a URL. So we can see here, form.jotform.com, the name of the form, uh, the email address here. So mail is test, company name is test, project name equals test, project outline equals test, name equals test, and then the final two ones here. Now, what you can do with this is you can copy and paste it as I have here and I add it in. And then essentially I just need to encode after each of the URL suggestions, the information that I want to be pre-populated. So for example, I have the first name here, the email, the company name, the name, the description, the contact name, the price, the billing cycle. And this sends a unique link to every client. So the end result is something like this. They will receive the information here. The name will be pre-filled out. The company name is pre-filled out. The email is pre-filled out. The project outline is pre-filled out. The name of the opportunity is pre-filled out. The pricing, the monthly billing cycle, the uh, all of this information. And then the client just needs to sign it, press submit, and it's done. Now, obviously, for the purposes of the example, I've kept the fields pretty low. But if you have a really complex company where you need to know, for example, how much volume does a company ship? Or what are the individual products that they need from you? or when is the payment going to be made? Anything you want, you just need to create a field, put it into the uh, job form prepopulate.com, and essentially it will make it very easy for you to pre-fill out this information. So once the information is filled out and the client accepts it, it comes to the third step, which is essentially watching for submissions. So it will watch for form submissions, it will find that opportunity based on the name. The reason it finds it based on the name is because you might have more than one opportunity for the same client or the same person. So as long as the name, as long as you don't modify this after the quote is sent out, it will find the person. It will update the CRM. So it will say this person has approved it. Um, and it would send it to basically, it will update it to money to, um, to send to find the quote. Then you need to remind yourself at the end of every month to send the invoice. And it will uh, basically update the CRM with a new client as well so that uh, we have another tab here and it will basically make sure you have a centralized place to just uh, not have to do much more manual work. Now this works with a, um, a webhook, so it should be running automatically. Um, and when I check the history, I'll be able to see that it's been processed. Now, again, you probably want to add on an extra level to this where you're monitoring the invoices. So every time that a client accepts a quote, you will then want to send an invoice through Invoice Ninja or QuickBooks, for example. The reason I haven't included this is because the complexities of Portuguese law make it just pointless for anyone else to know about, unless you are based in Portugal. But you see the principles here essentially to have three distinct workflows, one for when new leads come in, one for once you've uh, had a meeting with them and you've agreed on all of the notes and it sends a quote. And then one that basically just looks for when new quotes come in. Uh, I prefer to use JotForm because the free plan for what I need is perfect. You just need to spend a bit of time making sure that the fields you need in the quotes match up to the fields you have here in the opportunities. So if you need to add extra things, as mentioned before, uh, for example, the volume a company does or the revenue they have, you just need to create new field, insert right, put it in. And then during your call, make sure you fill out all of the forms. So again, it's a pretty simple workflow, or I should say a connection of three workflows to solve a very simple problem that I had. 
If you need something more complex for your business, please just get in touch. I'll either make a video or we can get on a call and I can sort it out for you. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave some comments underneath. And thanks for your time. Goodbye.